For many people, the very thought of investing in stocks brings anxiety. What if the market goes south and you lose everything? What if you invest in a dud while other great stocks shoot up around it? The truth is, those things do often happen. It's a risky game, but it doesn't have to be like this. There are tried and tested methods. These will help you to choose great companies, invest in them at the right time, and avoid the unprofitable ones. You have to learn from history, from the stock market's great winners and losers. When you do that, it's possible to strategize so that you maximize your returns and avoid big losses. In this video, you'll learn some of these winning methods, from a telltale stock chart pattern to the best types of companies in which to invest. If you study the history of the stock market, you'll notice that many things remain the same. Regardless of the era, there are great winners and great losers. This means that you can learn from the behavior of past stocks and apply it to the present. And the best way to do that is to read stock charts. In almost every field, we assess current conditions to plan our next move. Think brain scans that doctors use to treat illnesses before they progress. Or consider how seismic data is used by geologists to study earthquakes. By learning to see patterns that have replicated themselves time and time again, we can decide how to act in the present. The same is true for investing. We can use all of the stock market data from the last hundred years to find patterns. That way we know when to jump in or out of a stock. Many investors fail to do this, and unless they're spectacularly lucky, they lose money. So, what should you be looking for in stock charts? Quite simply, price patterns. There are many price patterns, but one of the most important to remember looks like a cup with a handle. In fact, that's its name, cup with handle. So after rising for a period of time, a stock will often fall. As it falls, it sometimes makes a rounded downward curve which then becomes a steady flat line. This is the base of the cup. This base is very important. Because without a strong base of investors who believe in the stock, it could just collapse. But with this solid foundation, the stock will rise properly when its fortunes change. As it climbs upward, it will form the other side of the cup. Just then, it dips back again, and it will form the handle. It's precisely at that point that you should buy in. More times than not, the stock will shoot upward. This trusty stock market pattern has resulted in great rewards for investors over the decades. Profitability is the key to any successful business. And generally speaking, with a successful business comes a growing stock price. When choosing stocks, you should look for those with big earnings increases. Firstly, history bears this out. Consider two modern tech giants, Google and Apple. Google started trading at $85 per share in 2004 and climbed to $700 in 2007. Then, in only 45 months, Apple went from $12 per share to $202. Yes, both companies were revolutionizing their particular space, but they also showed a big increase in earnings just before their stock shot up. However, as with so much in the stock market, there are pitfalls to this approach. One of these is getting dazzled by rumors of big future earnings. For instance, during the big internet boom of the late 1990s, there were many speculative stocks. They didn't have concrete earnings to show for themselves. Investors were drunk on the optimism of the moment, so they bought into them. Come the dot-com crash, these companies suffered enormous declines. But tech companies which did have serious earnings suffered much less. So, only invest in companies with real growing earnings. When searching for these profitable companies, you should focus on the earnings per share or EPS number. This number is calculated by dividing a company's total after-tax profits by the number of shares issued. You should search for companies with big consistent percentage increases in their EPS number. Of course, you shouldn't buy a stock on earnings growth alone. There are other important factors to consider, but the percentage increase in EPS is the most important factor to look at when making a decision to buy. For over a century, the U.S. has been an engine of change. It has brought disruptive technology to the rest of the world. This affects stocks too. Study the stock market from 1880 onward, and you'll see that companies which introduced revolutionary technologies also enjoyed rocketing stock prices. Great returns on the stock market and innovation go hand in hand. Innovation has led to remarkable stock price growth over the years. Take Cisco Systems, which created networking equipment that allowed companies to link up local area computer networks. 
Its stock climbed an astonishing 75,000% from 1990 to 2000. The USA continues to draw innovators from all over the world. For that reason, there will be many more opportunities. So if you missed out on Apple or Microsoft, don't fret. There'll be others. You just need to put in the hard work to spot them in time. But when is in time? A really great innovative company will often continue to grow exponentially, way beyond what's predicted. So don't follow the traditional logic which says buy low, sell high. Instead, don't be afraid of buying when a stock seems to be at a high point already. Take Cisco Systems for instance. It was already at an all-time high in 1990. And that's before it went on its incredible 75,000% surge. However, there is a right time to buy a stock. That is when it has consolidated its base and is about to break out. The cup with handle is a surefire sign of this. So, look for great pioneering companies. And do your best to invest in them at the right time, and you'll be ahead of the game. The price of nearly everything is determined by supply and demand. So, when you buy things in your daily life, the price depends on how much of each product is available and how many people want to buy it. The principle of supply and demand applies to the stock market too. Imagine that one company has issued 5 billion shares and another has 50 million. To produce a stock rally in the one with 5 billion shares, an enormous amount of buying is required. But the smaller stock with only 50 million could shoot up much more quickly. The supply for the small stock is much less, so price movements would be much more dramatic. But just as it could fly upward very quickly, a so-called small cap stock could also crash just as dramatically. So while the rewards could be more spectacular, the downside is sometimes much larger. A company with many more issued shares is a less risky proposition. That's because a great deal of selling is needed before the price moves. So the law of supply and demand dictates that a small company can yield more explosive results and a big company might be a more reliable investment. But who owns these shares matters too. In big and small companies, it's a good sign if top management owns a significant percentage of company shares themselves. If they don't, they may not have a strong vested interest in the company's success, so the stock could be a liability in your portfolio. But if management does own at least 1-3% to of a big business and more in small companies, then the business will generally be a better investment. Another factor to keep in mind is companies buying back their own stock. This is a good sign. It suggests that the company believes that improved earnings are on the horizon and their stock could soon be in high demand. Many of us have favorite companies that make us feel good and it's these companies in which we tend to invest. Think of companies like Coca-Cola or Nike with well-loved products and a great lasting brand. However, in a bull market, old favorites like these can sometimes be left in the dust by dynamic new leaders. As a rule of thumb, you should buy the leading companies in their group. A leading company is not necessarily the largest or the most recognized brand name. They're the ones with the best quarterly and annual earnings growth, the strongest sales growth, the widest profit margins, and the highest return on equity. These companies will also have a unique and innovative product which is driving these results. It's always better to buy dynamic companies over the sentimental old favorites. This was clear during the big bull market of 1979 and 1980. The most dynamic companies of the time, Wong Labs and Datapoint had up to seven-fold increases. At the same time, the grand old computing giants like IBM were pretty much static. Just because they'd been reliable over the years didn't mean that they could bring the dramatic returns of the leading companies. You should always avoid the second best or the copycat company. The leader will nearly always outperform these. But oftentimes people invest in these second-best companies because they hope that some of the luster of the industry leader will rub off on it. Sadly, that's hardly ever the case. As the industrialist Andrew Carnegie said, the first man gets the oyster, the second the shell. It's always the real innovators and entrepreneurs that drive the market. These are the companies in which you should look to invest. Rather than purchase individual shares, some investors put their money into funds. A fund is a whole assortment of different stocks bundled into one investment. In the United States, they're called mutual funds. These funds are provided by big institutions. They are run by financial experts who handpick which stocks to include. As an individual stock investor though, it's worth checking which stocks these experts have picked. These big institutions make up the bulk of stock buying in the world. 
and because of this, they drive the market, pushing stock prices higher or lower. With this in mind, it's worth paying particular attention to what they do. If you own shares that the big institutions are buying, then you will see the stocks rise in your own portfolio. Specifically, you should pay attention to what the best performing funds are doing. These are the funds that generate the biggest annual returns and are run by the most insightful investors. Institutional investing also matters in general, whether or not it's from top performing funds. If many funds are buying into a stock, it will rise in value. Along with analyzing the activity of these institutions, it's worth knowing about their stock picking philosophy. You can learn from the best by looking at their prospectus, which you can either download or request directly from the firm. The prospectus will tell you which technique each fund employs along with the kinds of stocks they purchased. However, it's worth noting that some stocks can become overowned by big institutions. Some stocks are just bought automatically, even when they might not be in great health. Take Xerox, for example. It was a favorite of institutions in the 1970s with an amazing track record. But some astute analysts noticed that all was not well at the company. Very soon, the stock headed down. So, learn from the best, but also do your homework. Nothing beats your own due diligence. Individual stocks only matter up to a point. If the market goes down, you'll lose money. Just think back to the crash of 2008. For the most part, it didn't matter how good your stock picking was. If you didn't sell in time, you lost money. The truth is, three out of four stocks will lose value if the general market is heading downward. What exactly is the general market? Broadly speaking, it's an overview of all of the big stock indices like the Dow Jones Industrial Average and the Nasdaq Composite. You can monitor these online. To judge the general mood of the market, you should check if there has been significant buying or selling going on. It's important to keep a close eye on key indices, as a change can happen over just a few weeks. If you fail to pay attention, you could be left standing open-mouthed as a big crash wipes out your returns. For instance, if you notice that stocks keep opening high and closing low, the market could be entering a bear market where prices fall. Conversely, if you notice that stocks open weak and close strongly, it could be the first sign of a bull market. What you shouldn't do is listen to too many financial analysts or investors' newsletters on the state of the market. For the most part, these are expensive distractions. Experts whose opinions contradict one another can just confuse, rather than clarify things for you. The best strategy is to observe the market itself. Think of it as a little like observing wildlife. If you were studying tigers, the best resource would be the tigers themselves. You could read all of the literature on tigers in the world, but nothing would be more instructive than watching the animals in their natural habitat. The same is true for the stock market. 